the topic of today is rather concerned about children so we're not going to go into the adult stuff or rather politics or anything like that we're going to keep the discussion of this program on children so one of the most common things that uh, people usually ask or relevant as we see in this tr- uh, today's world is as technology is evolving more and more children they are becoming more attached with the technology so the topic for today is how does excessive use of electronic device affect the mental health of children so this is the topic that we are going to discuss which will be followed by more other topics inshallah if we have time so first of all let me give you few short lines and share my opinion with all of you so basically let us know what is the screen time so i'm pretty sure most of you have heard the word screen time so screen time is basically the total time spent per day in viewing screens such as mobile phone tv computer tablet or any held handheld visual device so just like how we balance our diet our food excessive use of technology can be bad however technology can also be useful in one way however it can also be bad if we use it too much so basically according to the screen time guidelines by indian academy of pediatrics children below the age of 2 years should not be exposed to any type of screen for children between the age of 2 and 5 years it should not exceed 1 hour for older children and adolescents it is important to balance screen time with other activities like physical activity adequate sleep time for school work meals hobbies and family time that are also required for overall development so this is what study shows now basically excessive use of electronic devices it can impact mental health of children in all age groups no matter if it's an infant or uh, if it's a teenager or a middle aged man whatever it is it can still affect the person to some degree it can also lead to some other stuffs like delayed speech hyperactivity aggression violence desire for instant gratification now this term instant gratification is very important because if you notice the children of today uh, as from my personal experience that is uh, children who sorry there was a slight disturbance so children who watch too much phone or are addicted to phones if you take phone away from them they will resort to violence they will resort to extreme hyperactivity as i have noticed and slowly it builds over time and time so the more unnoticed it is the greater impact it can have on a child or on anybody so it can also have other physical effects as well not only mental it can also have other physical impacts such as obesity sedentary lifestyle disturbed sleep eye strain neck back and wrist pain reduced socialization and social anxiety and decreased academic performances are some additional ill effects of prolonged screen exposure so basically if you see this goes to all the streamers or gamers or anything like that okay sorry for slight disturbance again yeah so basically as i was saying it also has some physical ill effects so if you notice the persons who use too much screen okay they play games too much or or if they so so if they sorry sorry for the slide the servant yeah so if they use too much if they are used to playing too much games or they do any sort of uh, social media or anything like that it can affect them so my question is 
okay my question is how how can we help the children who are addicted to mobile phones tv or electronic gadgets uh, i would like to ask all of your opinions based on it so mr rajiv please how can we help the children who are addicted to technology who are the slaves of technology hello i think you raised some really good points there and addiction is a huge problem nowadays and i don't think there's an easy solution to this problem as a victim of social media and technology uh, addiction myself i think there are some ways that i have tried to adopt that have helped me combat this issue one of the main things that i would advise young people to do if they're planning on reducing their technology usage is slowly take away time spent on technological devices i don't think you have to immediately just take away your devices i think it can be done throughout a longer period of time for example if you're using a device for 10 hours a day i think you can cut it down to 8 hours instead and the 2 hours that you gain from it you can do you can use it for any other activity and i think using this process over time i think addiction can be lowered without completely removing technology from your life because as you mentioned withdrawing technology devices from children it causes violence and hyperactivity and some aggressive reactions so i think the way to combat this is slowly take away the time spent on technology and this will have a, uh, less resistance on the children they would be more likely to comply with the the rules set by their parents for example and they would be more obedient and i think this is a good way to help people get out of their addiction thank you yes thank you you have made some excellent points now who agrees with mr rajiv anybody who is against or with his opinion yes mr akhlamwan no no sorry i raised my hand by accident no it's all right you're good to go yes would you like to share your opinion with us Yes anybody who would like to share their opinion Yes Huzaifa Alam Okay Does anybody else have a view Yes Mr Abdullah Tafin um what mr rajib said is actually to, like i believe that is the correct thing to do because since already the damage has been done from the smaller age groups so if you immediately take it then there would be some withdrawal effects they might try to rebel against you and then they would hate you but then uh, what you can do is slowly slowly prolonged like uh, like there's stages stage 1 where you just give them for less time and then stage 2 you try to replace it with something and then those planned steps they can actually help them because if you do it all at once then they wouldn't talk to you and then they would feel like prison and they would have mental more mental problems than they already have so slow slow effects and prolonged effects will help them for a better future and uh, not to repeat those same mistakes for the ones that are about to come so that's like that's the plan like if you do it immediately then they will have more problems than they already have but if you do slowly slowly prolonged steps then they would actually later they would come to find out that my parents did the best thing for me that i was in danger and 
like they took it away from me slowly slowly with planned steps that's what i think i should do so i agree i agree with that opinion okay very nice so what we come to learn from this opinion is that not to take immediate action we have to slowly 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 cut out from the technology isn't that right okay so i guess everybody agrees with this opinion of mr rajiv so i have another question to ask so as i've noticed from my personal life that uh, as technology is evolving the number of children who are getting smartphones as a reward or a gift uh, because they scored good marks in the exam so for example i got my first personal phone when i reached almost the end of 10th grade now when i look at somebody some children who studies in class 5 or they they study in class 4 or even sometimes in some cases the children who study in kg okay kindergarten they also have a smartphone so what what is everybody's view on that Sh- should they have smartphones at such a young age yes radhia khan mrs radhia khan please would you like to share your opinion yes um what was the question again yeah so the question was as technology is evolving more and more the number of children who are smaller in age they are getting mobile phones they are getting technological devices as a reward or anything like that so my question is should children of small age be allowed to have smartphones as in somebody who studies in 5th grade or 6th grade no i don't think so like um children should have uh, like if they score good marks in their exam and if their parents want to reward them they shouldn't like give their uh children devices at a young age if they have to give reward like smartphone or any tablet or devices they should give at like a higher age like a higher age than like if they want to give their children rewards at a young age for getting good marks in their exams they should like give like anything else except yeah. the devices okay, example so, if they yeah okay. if they give their children like puzzles or board games they can improve their brains mentally yes so i kind of agree with your opinion because uh, usually i would say i would suggest a better alternative uh, rather than electronic devices so rather than giving children electronic devices as a reward we can give them toys right we can give them toys we can give them story books we can also give them puzzles as you said so studies have actually shown that puzzles okay any ca- sort of riddle books or any sort of uh, story books they improve the children's mind efficiency mentally so does anybody disagree with mrs radhia khan that children should not have mobile phone at a young age who agrees and who disagrees can anybody else share their opinion um hello uh, my name is rehan yeah so i do agree with the point that you know ch- children at a young age shouldn't be exposed to technology but i feel like a better argument would be that children shouldn't be allowed to have unrestricted use of this technology now children at a very young age are actually very um influenced easily all right um the the younger years from you know 1 to 8 the children's children are very affected by you know whatever we do our actions you know so at such a young age i believe we should actually try to instill some good values in them and you know teach them some morals and ethics and try to not you know overwhelm them with uh, you know 
technology and just unrestricted use of technology because that can lead them to become confused and well they'll just start you know doing whatever they want and whatever they feel like because there's nothing stopping them from doing so so you know as uh, you know children what a lot of parents do you know in uh, some countries they just leave their children with uh, you know technology devices because they themselves can't be bothered to actually spend time or give them time and energy because they all might already have a lot to do on their plate so this unrestricted use might lead them into some wrong areas or might lead them to some bad uh, influences so that's my point basically what i'm trying to make is that we should try to control the use of technology for our children as much as we can because we at some point we have to introduce them to technology because we live in the technological era and you know devices are becoming more common you know if you don't know how to use a phone today it's very awkward you know you won't be able to be able to contact with anyone you won't be able to you know communicate with anyone at all other than face to face so this is why i believe that you know children will at some point have to have some experience in technology especially as technology gets more advanced and more complicated to understand younger children who have a much easier time to un- learn this new technology and understand it better um you know i believe a lot of us younger students you know our, our parents or or someone might have some questions about an app or uh, some some device they're having troubles with and they come to us because you know we usually have more knowledge so that's the that's the important uh, idea is to have controlled uh, you know usage of technology and not to you know let them have unrestricted use or access to the internet and technologies and you know that's about it for my point yes thank you so your opinion was really the turning point so it teaches us that even though we should not let uh, let our children use excessive technology however we should introduce them to technology because we actually live in a technological society without technology nothing can be done so what you're trying to say is there's there should be a balance between the two there should be a balance between the two to the point that they actually live healthily and there is no adverse side effects into the children's mentality or any physical uh, fitness so so that's what that's basically it right so one more thing which i noticed yes mr abdullah tafin you raised your hand would you like to say something um yes uh, thank you uh, the thing is uh, what mr rehan said is absolutely right and this is like the main point because uh, the generational gap between our parents and us is a huge gap the the social media did not exist back then the internet it did not exist back then it's so much different so uh, the to say that we just have to do puzzles and then no no mobile phones it is all, it all boils down to the responsibility of the parents if you can uh, control them with puzzles then you can control them with even with mobile phones and uh, the new the uh, the new mobile phones and their services the big companies like apple and other thing like other companies they are Uh, like they are focused more on the parental control so if you go to for example the settings of the iPhones you can actually monitor your kids phones so it all boils down to how much responsible the parents are so and at one point yes i do agree with mr rehan that we have to introduce them to technology because they are kids if they are kids then a kid they can learn the language way faster than the adults so just like our parents they come to us for the help in these technologies some like we like when it's uh, it's constantly developing so when our kids will be there we might have to go to them for more advices on what to do on and what not like uh, 10 years ago or even 5 years ago like the ai was not so advanced now it is we can just fake the voices there's a lot of things there are a lot of good things that the children can learn and at the same point there are a lot of bad things as well so if you can just restrict the bad parts and utilize the good parts then this will not just be beneficial this will this will be a turning point you, your children they can take the advantages like before the worldwide the media and the information it was not so like it was not so widespread now within a click of a button you can just hear you can just 
understand anything in the world, anything. There's nothing that stops you. But at the same time, the advantage is that nothing stops you. And the disadvantage is nothing stops you. So if you can utilize the good parts and the parents can do that to the children, then like this can be turned into a good point. But unfortunately, many of the times it happens that the children, they're left with unrestricted internet access and they go to the bad parts and they get influenced and they turn into bad. But at the same point, we can see that uh, like the companies like Google and then Apple, they have many 13 year old workers that earn more than the adults. Why? Because they utilize the good parts. And if we can really boil down to the fact that if we can actually control them to do the good parts, then it will really be beneficial for them. So that's what my point is, because before we could do puzzles, but this is not really the age of that. We have so many technological advancements and we have to utilize them, but in a balanced way. Yes, thank you. So Ms. Rabia Islam has raised a hand. So what's your thought? What's your opinion on this? Yes, Ms. Uh, Rabia Khan. Uh, uh, can I say a point about how can we uh, avoid electronic devices? Yes, sure, go ahead. We can uh, avoid electronic devices by going outside, playing, doing sports, or going to the mall, shopping, or visit some new places. Yes, that's a very good solid point because as much as technology is important, it is also important for us to do physical activities. If you are dependent too much on technology, for example, if you sit in front of a screen like 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, your physical health will deteriorate and uh, you might be obese, you, you might develop some sort of health issues. And this is becoming more prominent day by day. And one more point which I would like to make is, uh, oftentimes I have noticed, and I guess most of you have noticed that uh, sometimes usually when there is a family, there is a small family, there is a small infant, or maybe, maybe there is like a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, and the parents of the child, they are very busy with their personal life. They have to do jobs. They have to go here. They have to go there. So, and they, they cannot give time to their children. So the children, when they disturb them or anything like that, when they cause commotion, chaos, as children should, and to calm them down, they hand them a phone. While feeding them, they hand them a tablet where they can watch cartoons because so that they, they can just leave the children in peace so that they don't make noise, okay? And they can do their work peacefully. What do you think about that? What is your opinion? Should the parents do it or should the parents not do it? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Mr. Akbar Pro, please share your thoughts. Uh -huh. Yes, so I would love to share the opinion that if the kids are disturbing you, so they should buy them pets or any other like a robot that will like entertain them without like like damaging their mental health. Like if you uh, give them pets, they'll play with them, they'll be entertained. Even the pets will be happy. Yes. That's a very good point because uh, pets, they actually make the family more uh, happy. I can see in your profile picture, there is a picture of a cat, right? Because I'm guessing you have a pet. Yeah. Uh, sadly, he is lost now. Oh, my severe condolences. Uh, I have two kittens myself and recently I adopted them. So I can, I can understand your point. Yes, uh, Mr. Abdullah Tafin, would you like to share your thought? Um, yes, uh, based on what you asked, like if the, uh, if, the, if the children, they make commotion or if they make chaos, then the parents just hand them the phone. But 
the main point is aren't parents supposed to handle that commotion to teach them through so they be calm because they're kids they're kids for a reason they're learning they're curious so of course they will make the noise but the thing is the way to tolerate them to control them without giving them some kind of treats like a phone it's just like a pet for example if you want your pet to do something then you first train it with treats but then just like that a children like a, for example a dog a dog's brain is approximately like a two year old child so if if your if your children makes a noise for example if they make a noise and then you just give them the phone then the next time the children they will think that if they just keep on making the noise they will just get the phone and that starts the that's the beginning of the unrestricted internet access like they try to get the phone more because they make more commotions why not just tolerate it and why not just go against them because it's okay to go against your child because you are the parent he is the child so if he's the child then he's supposed to listen to you not you are supposed to listen to them you know more than him so instead of just giving them an easy way out how about say him no just learn no for example uh, i have seen a kid like in a mall he wants a toy and his father refused him so he started crying on the floor he started shouting he started cussing at his parents and his parents finally bought him so next time if he goes to that shop and if he wants something else he will do the same thing and embarrass his parents how about his parents just say no do anything you want i'm not going to give i'm not going to give that to you then next time you will see that there's no point in making noise there's no point there's no point in shouting there's nothing there's nothing that they can achieve by doing that horrible acts so if you can just control your kids like that if you can just train them that whatever they do whatever things they do whatever commotion they do is of typically of no use it's just waste of their energy then i think they will understand that's how they understand yes excellent point mate so what he did is he gave us the example uh, of a pet how the way it behaves is the way you train it so i think when it comes to children it also boils down to the same point because if you give them chance if you make a bad first move it's going to give them it's is going to make crying or pleading for something their leverage so what the next time they will try to uh, get something okay by crying or by shouting so um Yes. If I could make a point, uh, you know, yes, I yes. did start uh, in my first point in my first argument. I did point out that parents are can be somewhat to blame for you know some children. However, um, I have to come to the defense when I have to say that, you know, when when you're a parent, there's not really a manual or a guide you can watch on you know on YouTube to that teaches you how to raise a child properly, and in the right way. You know, every child is different. Every child is unique, and simply parenthood is something we as you know children or students can't completely understand so i feel like we should cut some slack to the parents because they may be trying their best and sometimes for some of us uh, for some people out there it may not be enough but we can't put that entirely on them because you know uh, parenthood is uh, very difficult it's uh, very draining you know having to work and then raise a child it's it's a very it's a very taxing uh, thing to do and not that many people are ready for it when they think they are but um regardless i feel like we shouldn't put all the blame on you know on you know parents however they it's not like they're innocent either uh, but the same can be said for the children themselves who you know when they grow up when they're more mature uh, mature enough to understand uh that you know between right and wrong and what's what's good and what's bad that when they reach that age of maturity uh they themselves now have a responsibility to understand that what they're doing is not right and what they're doing is wrong um and i believe parents uh you know should try their absolute best to try to put them on that path as early as possible uh but just the main point i want to make is that we should do we should try to some cut some slack because we don't understand how difficult parenting is in, in its complete uh, you know form we don't have any idea how it feels like to not only work to support the family 
And, you know, a lot of us, some of us may have, may be working extra just to provide for everyone, to feed everyone. Uh, and on top of that, their education, all of these financial issues, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of burden on the parent. And on top of that, having to maybe raise a child who, you know, maybe sometimes, sometimes they turn out to be grateful. Sometimes they're, you know, bratty, they're, uh, you know, spoiled. Uh, so th that's just the point I'd like to make uh, in defense of parents, of course. Yes, thank you for sharing your opinion. Uh, okay, so Mr. Abdullah Tafin has raised a hand. Would you like to share anything? Uh, I would like to say that, um, yes, uh, I agree with Mr. Reha that we should cut some slack of the parents, but then whether the child becomes spoiled or whether he understands is mostly based on the parents themselves. If you give them what they want from the childhood itself without having to do any work, then of course they will be spoiled because they are the kids and that's how you develop them. But yes, you have to do work. It's a really hard thing. We should cut some slack off. But then uh, mostly if you can show them, if you could give them your own time, that's even better. But then, yes, we should cut some slack off from the parents because it's not like we can comp uh, comprehend it. It's not like we have done it. We are the kids. But then if, if it's not done from an early age, then when they become big, when they become mature, then you, of course they will understand what's good and what's not. But then since they will be already be addicted, they will know that they are harming themselves. They will already know that, yes, whatever they're doing is not right, but they won't be able to control themselves. So the earlier they are devoid of that behavior, the, the better it is. Uh, parenting can be hard, but then when you decide to have a child, then that's the responsibility you are supposed to take. Otherwise, don't have children. That's what that's like every ch every child. They deserve a parent, but not every parents. They deserve a child. So if that's the responsibility you are supposed to take, then that's how you should do it. But yes, it can be hard and it's nothing. We can comprehend it. But also, you have to look at the fact that if they're too big, then it's not like they can be like easily undone because it's easy to influence a, children, a, a child's mind rather than an adult or even a teenager's mind. That's what I'd like to add. Yes, thank you for the excellent opinion. So based on what I've heard from you two right now is that we should cut some slack on the parents because obviously parenting can be a really difficult thing. Yes, please. Okay, parenting can be a really difficult thing. And also having to work and also having to raise a child, it's really a troublesome process. So we should actually show a bit of sympathy for the parents. So, and one more point which I have noticed, which caught my curiosity is that when the child eventually grows, into an adult, like if he turns 18, okay, then he should be responsible for the actions that he is doing, right? Which brings on to the next topic, which is, so this is very uh, common in our culture that um, many parents, they send their children to foreign countries. Like for example, Canada is the country which has the most hype uh, for international students. So many a times everywhere, if you see uh, children, they are for study purposes, they are going to Canada or UK or USA for uh, study purposes. So my question is, when the child actually grows up and then becomes responsible and he, be he actually becomes responsible for his actions and he goes to a foreign country for higher studies, how does the absence of parents, the absence of a guardian, and also the outside environment influences them. If you have anything to share based on that, you can. Yes, Mr. Raihan, would you like to share anything? Uh, yes, so, you know, uh, as I did say earlier that about, uh, you know, when they reach the age of maturity and they're responsible, um, there, oh, I'd like to ask you a question on that. Um, what do you believe is the age of maturity? What do you think is the age at where they should feel responsible? Yes. So 
It's a very peculiar question. Yes, I'm going to answer that. So actually, I think age doesn't have to correlate with maturity. Some people, they can be mature at a young age. Some people, they can be mature at uh, later stages. So I think parents, they should detect. They have to understand that is their child actually mature enough to uh, live by himself or anything like that. So it really depends on the child's demeanor. Okay, it really depends on the person's demeanor, his personality, his characteristics, the traits that he's showing. So sometimes, often we can see that uh, a 16 year old, I've noticed, okay, my personal experience, I've noticed 16 year olds, some, some 16 year olds, they are more mature, the way they talk, the way they behave, the traits, the characteristics that they show, they tend to be more mature than some 18 year olds. And in some other cases, some 18 year olds, they tend to be more mature than the 16 year olds. So in my opinion, it's not more, it's not based on age, but based on the way, you know, char the character, the way the character of the person is developed. Oh. So yes. All right. That's that's the point I was hoping you would. That's how I was hoping you would answer. Now the thing is, when you send a student over internet abroad, you know, to another country to study, when we, we uh, parents we usually do this at you know around the age of 18, 19. Now this is the biggest misconception is that when a child has turned eighteen, they are an adult. That's absolutely not true. Um, I'm sure if anyone you know if maybe you yourself, I believe you're eighteen. You haven't noticed that much of a change from you know age of seventeen to eighteen. Uh, there hasn't that big um, big of a change. Because... Yeah, there is no drastic shift. It slowly builds up. You know, if you, if yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. So there is when you turn eighteen, you don't have a this random urge or this sense of responsibility that appears out of nowhere. I'd say you know I've seen people talk about it, and you know usually they say that around the age of twenty three to twenty five is when everything finally settles in and they begin feeling like an adult. Now, sending an 18 year old who isn't, you know, at this, oh, accident, all right. So who sending an 18 year old who isn't at this level of maturity yet to another country is extremely overwhelming, especially a child who's been in one country for most of his life. The, for example, we are Muslims, you know, we have a religion and in certain parts of the world, like in the West, uh, Islam can be seen as very extreme and the way it's been represented in those countries is has been shown in a negative light. So, you know, de de uh, depending on our heritage, our religion, our beliefs and all of that, our characteristics, being sent to those countries can be extremely overwhelming. For example, let's say you do have, okay, let's say you go to Canada to study maybe engineering because it's a good country to study engineering. and. You go there and you must not only hold your uh, responsibilities as a Muslim, but also as a student. So maybe you're studying for your exams, you have some upcoming exams and you're studying for them. But then, you know, you get hungry and you want to buy some food. And then the worry, worry appears that, oh, is this food halal? Is this the right food? Is, is this going to affect me? And, you know, all these factors can slowly build up over time. You know, all these concerns is, is this allowed? Am I, am I doing well enough? All this. And I feel like that this is affected by a lot of factors, but also the students and people who are around you, your friends that surround you also have a great, great impact on what the type of person you become. If you, depending on the type of, uh, you know, friends you have from a young age, it determines how well-mannered you are, how mature you were, as you were saying that some 16 year olds are more mature than 18 year olds. Um, this could be said, this could be the, the reason could be that, you know, maybe their friends, the people they've been surrounded by have not been, you know, very mature, have not given them much responsibility, but the 16 year old has been placed under a lot of responsibility, a lot of, you know, a weight, a lot of, you know, uh, basically, you know, responsibility, as I was saying. So as an 18 year old being sent to a different country, it's extremely overwhelming. And a lot of students, as I've, my teachers, who have a lot of experience with you know students and people who go to other countries most often than not they can they usually can be crushed under the pressure 
if you're uh, if you're planning on going medical, um, you know, my teachers have said they've gotten multiple students, many students who went to another country to study medical within six years, they quit because, you know, they can't handle it anymore because of the pressure. They feel anxious and some even feel suicidal. And, you know, this is a very serious worry that I don't think a student, a child who is still 18 is still a child, shouldn't be allowed to go to another country just by himself, having to work out everything like how much, which, where will I stay? How much a budget should I spend on food? What should my, my living costs? How should I manage my bills? Do I have to pay taxes? And all of these. So it's a lot of worries for a person who's, you know, up until 17 has been, has, has not even had to think about anything like this. And then on 18, they just like that, a snap, all of this just falls on him. And a lot of people might not be able to withstand the pressure. Yes, excellent. Now, Mr. Abdullah Tafin, I mean, sorry, that's my name. So Mr. Abdullah Tafin has raised a hand. So would you like to share anything? Yes. Um, what I think is, uh, it really, everything that a, ch a, a child does, because if you're 17, if you're 30, if you're 40, you're still a kid to your parent. So everything dates back to how the ch child was actually raised. Like, what kind of condition did you put him in? Like, what kind, did you monitor his friend group? Did you ask him to stop hanging out with certain type of people? And then did you make him clean his room? Did you make him feel responsible? Did you make him do that by himself? So all these responsibilities, everything, everything comes at a young age. And when you are 18, 19, you just display how you were raised. So if you have taught your children how to deal with everything of that, that's why parenting is really hard because you, even the parents are overwhelmed everybody learns during the process so if you just try for example uh, you being a parent you can't understand sometimes you can make mistakes being a parent but then if you show them affection and if you can show them that you are trying then they themselves will understand when they're 18 19. yes my parents they worked really hard for me they gave their time they made me the person i am because parents they're they are the only people who will support you without like unconditionally so everything that a person displays at 18 19 is how he was raised for example you have an exam tomorrow did you study like day after day were you responsible in your small things so if you're not responsible at a younger age then how can you be responsible for all those things at an older age so everything that a person displays maturity depends upon the experiences rather than the age so if you made your child experience all of those responsible factors the things that's why there are so many camps that help them learn better because sometimes the parents they just put them in camps but you as a parent you should develop a kind of emotional well-being with your child otherwise it's gonna always be misunderstandings the wrong way so if you just teach them the experiences if you just show them how it is done and it, it doesn't have to be taxes it can just be do your homework or clean your room that's what it can start at and uh, like uh, he will understand it later on maybe he will be overwhelmed when he goes to those countries but then if he's a good muslim if he was taught the good principles if he was taught the good principle by his parents then he will be like it's not like uh, my parents are not watching but god is always watching so no matter what i do if my parents if they knew they wouldn't be happy so i wouldn't do it for them even though it looks tempting so if you could raise a responsible child then he will be he will do what's right and what's wrong and maybe he will not know at that time but as the process the pattern continues of the right choices and sometimes he will make a mistake and the moment they make a mistake they will call their parents dad i did a mistake if he's not close enough with his parent then of course he won't call his parent because his parents will yell at him but if he has a really emotional connection with his parent then his parent will be like, and if the parent is understanding then they will be like it's all right son like it's uh, you, you messed up but then there, uh, there are always learning factors. I admit my mistake. If, if both of the parties admit their mistake and they raise a responsible child, then he will be successful in anything, in anything. The human beings, they are the smartest beings on the planet. And I think that these things are nothing if they really are responsible and are taught those ways from the childhood. Yes, thank you. And uh, now Mr. Raihan Ahmad, would you like to say anything? Uh, yes, I believe uh, Tahfim had some excellent points he made. 
about the responsibility of parents as well as the uh, children. Now, the thing is, the children at a young age, as I said before, can be easily influenced. And what parents should try to focus on is monitoring their friend group, as I said before, because uh, you know, when children are in school with their friends, they're not with you. You don't have any control of what they do, what they're exposed to. So that's a very dangerous situation right there because depending on you know the type of people that surround you at school, you can be let down a very right or a very wrong path. Now, on top of that, uh, when you know a lot of students, a lot of parents put pressure on their children to perform well, right? And that's good. The pressure is good, you know. But the issue is too much can sometimes be overburdening. And also, let's say for example, uh, uh, your child has been doing good, has been getting straight A's for maybe like six grades in a row, like six exams, you know, six years of his life. He's been doing good and good and good. And then he has one bad exam. And when he has the one bad grade, let's say he failed the subject. And, you know, when he has that bad grade and you look at him and you basically you're disappointed in him and you don't, sh and you basically, you know, you scold him for getting that bad grade. And this happens to a lot of students, a lot of children. Uh, might have even happened to you when their parent, you know, they scold you for getting one bad grade, even though the others were excellent. That feeling is a very uh, negative, is a very strong negative feeling. And, you know, for example, think about if you were an employee of the year at a company for 10 years, and then for one bad year, they just completely fire you. That feeling is actually very, very negative, and it's very impactful on children because, you know, when when this happens, this can affect them very mentally, very negatively because, you know, parents, you know, as children, we see our parents as the highest, you know, highest, their opinions, their everything is at their highest, okay? We see them, you know, as idols. We, uh, you know, we go to them for everything. So when, because of one bad grade, you know, when the negative, when because of one bad grade, you get, they get negative feedback, the negative will outweigh the positive in most cases, all right? This is a case for almost everything. So a uh, lot of subjects. Yes. Negative thank outweighs. you for your opinion. Uh, sorry, sorry for the interruption, but I might as well encourage the persons who are silent here. So let them give a chance. So Ra teacher Rabea, yes, please. Would you like to share anything? Yes. Uh, you have raised your hand. So if you like to share anything, that would be nice. Yes, Abdullah Tafin, please share. Um, as Mr. Rehan already said, I uh, to, uh, in this meeting I have agreed with almost all of his points, and I would. Uh, this is no different that whatever you are taught as a child will really reflect. So if you are really competing with yourself and so if you're compared to others every human being is unique they have a unique physical appearance and a mentality they all have they, no matter how much similar they are there's something that's going to be different that may affect them to be different so if you can really accept your child as different they are and really guide them and do not compare them like and not compare them with any other children just compare him with his past like his previous selves then they will feel better. Otherwise, if they just mess up once, they'll feel like their life is over, everything is ended. And later they will regret that, yes, I could have done that, I could have fixed that, it was really no big deal. But at that moment, because of my past failure and those kind of mentalities, I really couldn't get myself to be above that. No matter how low you go, there's still a revival. That's what the main spirit should be. And if the parents could like, um, really engage this in their children and also it really comes to the child by themselves so yeah that's what i think yes so from based on what you said basically and also mr rahan said that uh, sometimes parents who expect high uh, they have high standards for their children so for instance if any any child gets straight A's for like for his entire life and once just once in his life he uh, 
he he gets like a b grade or a c grade and then he gets lower marks and sometimes uh it can infuriate the parents it can infuriate the parents to some degree that uh the child might have trust issues so in that case what's the duty of the parent and the children and let me ask uh huzaifa ahmed mr huzaifa ahmed would you like to share anything mr huzaifa ahmed Yes. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Awal, would you like to say, any, uh, say anything? Because uh, the motive of this conference is to help others speak publicly. So please, those who are silent, please don't feel shy. Okay, this is like an open discussion. You can say anything. You can speak freely. So please, I request. Those who are silent, please speak. Muhammad Rahman. Does anybody else? Mr. Sinan Fatin. Hello, Mr. Sinan Fatin. Am I audible to you? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, um, did you hear my question? Uh, share, share ideas about what? Yeah. So, my question was basically, so sometimes if the parents, they have high standard for their children, like for instance, if the child gets A grade throughout his life and once, just once, let me, uh, he gets bad grades and it infuriates the, uh, the, the parents and then it also leads to the child having negative effect. So what are the responsibility at that moment for that case for the parent and for the child? Please, if you have anything to share based on that, can you share with us, please? Um, the parents have to investigate why the, why the child did, why the child has put that box and I uh, asked uh, somewhat around somewhat about uh, what what was wrong and try to uh, mo try to motivate the child to do better next time and try to um, solve this issue and never try to let the child um, uh, uh, fail again and try to May try to convince them or try to motivate them into uh, studying more and trying to do much better next time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Rajib, would you like to say anything regarding what are the responsibility of the parent and the child in that uh, instance, in that case? Yes, I think both the parents and the child has equal responsibility when it comes to this. Before the child gets that bad grade, I think the parents have to make sure that the child is doing his job properly. Like if they have to monitor the child and make sure the child is actually studying because if they just let the child do whatever they want and the child happens to get a bad grade, I don't think the parents should be mad at them because they let them do whatever they want. They were not monitoring the child's progress and obviously there's a chance the child would slack off i guess on studies and do bad because of that so i don't think the parents have the right to be mad because of that they have to take responsibility beforehand they have to make sure especially if the child is very young i think the parents every now and then they should monitor the child's progress make sure they're doing their job they're studying properly and give them some sort of routine and monitor them consistently regularly and at the end, uh, if there has to, uh, if there's any reason 
uh, the child did bad on their exam, for example, if they slacked off, even though the parents gave them things to do and told them how to study and stuff. And if they still manage to do bad, I think then that's a huge problem. The parents should take action and make sure the child does not repeat the same thing again. Same with the child. I think he should obey his parents and follow yes. what they do and he should uh, study well so, as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your opinion. Now, uh, teacher Rabia has raised the hand. Would you like to share anything? Okay, uh, I wanna give importance to the persons who are silent because uh, it's an open, free session. You can speak anything from your mind. There is no uh, restriction. So I would encourage the people who are silent, please speak because I want in this session, I want maximum involvement from everybody. So, Mr. Akbar Pro, would you like to say anything? If you have heard my question, Mr. Akbar Pro. I have nothing to say. <laughs> you have nothing to say. Uh, well, in that case, okay. what do you what do you think? About, what's your opinion? Do you agree with us? Do you disagree? Uh, what's the what's your thoughts? Like, if you heard the question, how, how, should, how should a parent or a child react to the, to, to, how should a child react to their parents having high standards? And then if the parent scolds them for having bad grades just once, just once in their life, how, how should the child cope up? How should the parent uh, deal with the situation? If you have anything to say based on that, you can answer that, Mr. Abrakro. Yes, Mr. Abrar Pro. Okay, so, okay, uh, I'll give chance to Mr. Abdullah Tafkin. Yes, please speak. I believe Mr. Rehan uh, asked the moderator's opinion based on what we already said. What do you think? Like we said that uh, the parents, they should not scold if the person gets less marks just only once. What do you think of that? Do you think that they should scold so much or what do you think mm. okay that's a very important question because usually this type of question is pretty much neglected as far as i have seen because uh, this usually affects the children who are toppers right so usually what happens is if we see a child's uh, grade history uh, Let's say, for instance, the child is uh, getting straight A's, full class topper, and he has always been very excellent in scoring marks, okay, ever since he joined the school. And then up till today, he keeps on scoring good marks. But then if there comes just once, just once that he, you know, maybe because something happens, because bad thing can happen amongst the good things. So... For instance, if he has a bad grade just once, so in that case, I think, I, I do not only think, I am sure that the parent, uh, they should let their child just cool off just for once. Because what it really does is, if, like, I can understand the parent, they have high grade, like they have uh, high standards for their child much to the point that if they fumble just once, they scold them so much to the point that uh, the child, he might have uh, anger issues, he might have lack of trust, he might have other problems, he, he, ha uh, he might develop some aggressive coping mechanism. So all of these, the parents might think that they're doing a great thing, but then all they're doing is they're... Uh, they're trying to put the fuel on the fire. Uh, so rather than being too much aggressive, you know, too much scolding, I think rather than that, they should have a bit more, more of a moderate approach to the situation. 
because parents have to understand that sometimes it's not easy for the child to you know score good marks always he has to put in the work so sometimes by luck luck can be bad sometimes so for that bad things can happen so i think it's rather than to deal with the situation and creating a negative impact the parents should approach with a moderate expression to the point that the child do not uh, have some you know uh, aggressive coping mechanism so that's my answer basically yes mr raihan ahmed has raised a hand Would yes like so do you agree you with know, me the points you just said and as well as mr rajeev's points were absolutely amazing and uh but i do have to agree with some points from mr rajeev coming from him um you know i don't believe that children should not be yelled at uh, or scolded but it should be for the right reasons you know you know in case you know you would try to make your very best you tried your level best to make sure that the still child studies and you know he himself you know because of his own you know procrastination his own uh, laziness he does not study or finds a way to avoid studying and because of that he gets bad grades in that case actions could be taken but not you know not a big scolding a scolding is very direct i feel like more subtle uh, approach to the situation would be a better would have a better impact a more much more delicate impact on the student himself and uh you know as, as you said uh you know when a student if let's say a student as as the example was said a student for a lot of years did does get good grades and he happens to get one bad grade as the parent you don't have to say anything you know you know as a student um you know a lot of students who have been in the situation they they themselves will feel extremely bad because all these years they've been getting praise they've been getting a uh, recognition and attention from the school itself from students around them from their friends so now they have their own expectations to meet within their friends you as the parent should have uh, should have should set aside those expectations and just accept whatever happened to the child you should be there to comfort them because they themselves will have a lot of grief over getting that bad grade you know because you know in school a lot of students what they do they compare themselves especially in the earlier grades they compare themselves to their friends you know uh after the results they're like hey i got an a i got this much grades this this they compare themselves so now a student who's always been you know doing good having uh, high grades will usually feel bad getting a bad grade themselves now when if you were to scold them on top of that you know as you, you could easily see how it would you know overburden it would they grief themselves and then the grief from you know you scolding them you being so disappointed you know there's no relief in the stress and the pressure so you know it will build up over time and sometimes what this can lead to is maybe they make a mistake and when they make that mistake you might scold them as a parent and you know with the you, the time scolding them at an older age actually has a, i feel like a more negative you know impact that scolding them at an older age they as you said tasin um they lack they have a lack of trust and when they have a lack of trust maybe if they have you know they make some sort of uh, big mistake maybe for some reason they do something and it uh, leads to a really bad thing they can't come to you about it because in their head the situation that arises is if i go to my parents and i tell them this they'll kill me they'll insult they'll uh, you know they'll scold me they'll yell they'll scream they'll say this and that and this is you know this is actually not that good because then you have no one to go to your your friends you been might have been with your friends when it happened and you know so you can't even tell them you don't have anyone to talk to about it so it all gets bottled up and you know it's all inside of you and you can't let it out and it builds up over time and it can affect the character and mentality of the person very very negatively so what my what i should say as a parent what you should do first of all is be there for your child be comfort them no matter what if they make miss make a mistake comfort them as when they're younger you know punishments are fine you know it's because as a as when they're younger you know they learn by you know how children learn how young kids like 1 2 3 all that age they do something they have a negative feedback they don't do it 
that's how. But at an older age, it gets more complicated. Is that they might do something, but they have a you know positive but negative feedback. If you understand what I'm saying, you know you shouldn't do this again, but you know it's very dangerous. This and that, whatever. So I should be more delicate. Second of all, never compare your children to others. That's absolutely horrible. I, competition is good. Competition will make your ch uh, makes children, you know, ex uh, succeed. They'll make them excel. They'll become extraordinary when there's competition involved. But you know, if they obviously in a competition, there's first, second, and third. So not always can your child be first. There's someone, someone. They have sometimes second and third. So when they happen to be in that second, third position, you should not give them any grief. You should be proud. They managed to get there. Uh, there should be, not be any scolding or any disappointment that they didn't get first because they themselves will be disappointed. Competitions come from, we as children and students have competition. If we join a competition, we want to win. But then when we don't win, we're disappointed and so are our parents and they give us some grief about it. It affects us even more. So that's my second point. You should never compare your uh, children to other students. Um, you know, even when, you know, they might compare them, their students to yours or their children to yours. Yes, thank you. You have made some excellent points. Now, one of the things that, are, that is the most notable is never to compare your children with other children. Now, actually, we have come almost to the ending of the session. Now, I want to give way to uh, Mr. Rajib for the last uh, opinion to be shared. Yes, uh, I would like would to you like to say anything? Yes, please. Yes. So Raihan yeah, has made proceed. some really good points, which I'm sure a lot of us can relate with, especially the competition part. We as students, we already have competition with our friends and other classmates, and we ourselves are aware of everything we do. And we also feel bad when we score a bad grade. And I think parents scolding us on top of that is really burdening on our shoulders. Uh, so that's something. And also, I would like to make another point. If a straight A student at some point manages to get somehow a bad grade, I don't think it's something simple that you can just throw away. Like you have, to, it's a really big issue. A straight A student doing bad in an exam, I think there's a bigger reason behind that. And as Sinan said, I think you have to ask the student how, why he scored that bad grade, because a straight A student should not score a bad grade. There has to be a bigger reason behind that. It could be a mental issue or something the student is suffering through. And I think parents should make sure that everything is okay before scolding them. They have to make sure why the student, their son or daughter, they scored bad in that exam because they've been doing so well for so many years, uh, such a mishap is really unexpected. Of course it can happen, but something like that is very unusual and it could be something very, like much deeper than that. And it could be a very serious issue, which if parents don't look into that, the student might suffer even more in the future. So I think it should be resolved. Instead of the parents just scolding, they should ask the student why they did bad and so that they don't repeat the same thing again. That's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now we have almost come to the utmost end of this session. Now, for the last part, I want to actually give way to some parents uh, who are present in this meeting. So any parent who is present on uh, in this session, if you have anything to share, please share with us, because it's always the best thing to get advice from uh, our elders. So please. If there is any parent on board here, uh, it would be very uh, nice of you to share anything that you like. As Assalamu alaikum, uh, Abdullah uh, Tahasin. Uh, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, I am Engineer Amjad. Uh, I am the parents of Radhe Mubashra Khan Afsa and uh, Khan Redwan Amur. Both of them are with you now. And before me, actually, I would like to respect some uh, senior parents here who are involving here today is like uh, Izaz Ahmed Bhai, Izaz Bhai, Izaz Kalim Bhai, Shoaib Bhai. Uh, I would like to request them to say something about our session and today's uh, this our children discussions. 
and after that i will tell yes iras bhai aapne iras bhai please hi good afternoon and good evening yeah good evening as well yes i i hope you can listen to me yeah yeah yes, I, we are hearing you yes okay anyhow uh, i just joined the session in the midway actually but uh, i am really overwhelmed with the way all the young gentlemen were discussing uh, really speaking you are uh, you have got your maturity at a very early age if we compare with ourselves you know uh, the way we were uh, uh, we got grown up uh, we got the maturity very late you know one thing say so i'm telling you because i have two children uh, my son and daughter both are studying in canada by the grace of god my son is now working here and my daughter she is doing the undergraduate there are so many practical things the practical issues were discussed here the last issue the one someone was telling uh, i think mr abdullah was telling regarding the uh, getting of a bad grade of a certain student of any student you know so i will emphasize on three points you know first thing uh, you should be a good parent good parent means you should know how to uh, look after your parents you should uh, know how to monitor your uh, you should know i'm sorry you should know how to look after your children you should know how to monitor your children and one important thing you should know the capability of your children every child is not gold or every child is not diamond that is where i'm telling don't compare your children with others so the parent from the parent parts it's our responsibility we should know what is the capability of my children and he should perform at the best of his capability if something happens like in exam something happens that one of the grade he is getting low or he is affected obviously the first step is that you should be friendly with him rather than is calling first let him get relaxed okay it is done it happens it's a human error it can happen any time in the life it's a, it's not a big deal it's not end of the life but it's not end of your study so you should <clears throat> just make him cool but this is a this is a diplomatic thing you know let him calm down then you should investigate <clears throat> then you should investigate why it happened why it happened it it might be it is a grow it could be a grown up child it could be a young child uh, why it happened it could be maybe he missed something or he had some guidance or for some reason he got uh, he is getting out of track or he is being uh, maybe biased by some other issues uh, honestly speaking nowadays we have a lot of devices you know people get distracted because of devices we the parents during our younger age we don't have these devices you know most of us we were involved in playing in the afternoon evening time we were involved in playing the outdoor games you know but nowadays you see most of the child whenever they have the spare time the leisure period they are involved with the devices and devices okay you your devices are good you have you are sharing your knowledge you are getting so many updates but at the same time this is also parents responsibility to monitor that these devices doesn't bring any harm to them is are they using the devices in the proper way so that is the thing first we have to find out why he did the mistakes why why he went on the wrong way if possible if we have access to the schools or the colleges we can communicate with the with the uh, with the teachers with the communicate uh, with the supervisors then maybe you will get some feedback sometimes the children will not expose their difficulties to you directly but you can get the feedback from the child from the teacher itself so this is very important thing and then all the same time you should be friendly with your friendly with your uh, children but they should not take it as a granted 
means okay i excuse you this time i excuse you this time it doesn't mean you are allowed to repeat this again it doesn't mean you are repeat to, you are allowed to repeat this again i'm telling from the parents part and but at the same time the first important thing is that you should know the capability of the children and you don't compare with others he is doing this and that and the, you should be like this no then it will it will spoil his career it will spoil his career and you should monitor also what your children is in which department on which subject he is more interested i think it is better nowadays you should allow them to uh, to explore themselves to that department on that subject as it is in in our time you know there when we were uh, just getting graduated or we just f f finished our grade 10 or grade 12 uh, in our country you know people used to say okay you have to go for either engineering or you have to go for doctor means once you are admitted into a, a university engineering university or in a medical college means you have bright future nowadays i think this concept is not there this concept is changed let there are, you have so many other fields in the world where you can explore you can go to the height so let your children do let your children study the subject or lesser uh, children choose the line whichever he likes i hope this is the understanding that he can explore more actually so uh, anyhow yeah. uh, i have so many things to say i will not uh, <laughs> okay. uh, discuss anything i will uh, finish it uh, thank you thank you so much okay uh, over to someone you. else thank you uh, yeah thank you ajaz uh, bhai uh, for your uh, very important uh, some uh, key points for uh, the parents and the responsibility of parents of the children and uh, i think the shoy bhai is left uh, and i would like to request our engineer reza bhai uh, to say something regarding this session on behalf of our uh, parents okay thank you very much uh, engineer amjad and thank you very much uh, engineer ijaz bhai for your excellent uh, advice uh, to the young uh, students and to the parents also and this should everybody should follow should every parents should not compare with others so this is demoralizing uh, the children and from some points we got from the discussion among the uh, students is very very important points so what we initiated uh, the program i believe we will continue every two weeks program with the new agenda and the today program every uh, thank you very much to everybody uh, the, the, abdullah tasin abdullah tafim raihan ragib siran abrar so thanks to everybody and now we can finish thank you very much yes uh, thank you everybody so much uh, anybody else have to say anything mr it's it's okay it's okay mr uh, uh, abdullah Ta tahsin i would like to uh, you know uh, give thanks and for this today's uh, as a moderator yes. were the very useful discussion with us and also i learned My from pleasure. you also today i learned a lot Thank of things i learned from you as a parents and i got a lot of opinions from the children and who is this actually very exciting today's uh, discussion like some points like control of electronic devices advantages and disadvantages of the electronic devices physical and mental effects to using the electronic devices keep in touch of modern technology and is perfect uses uh, parents should provide uh, sufficient time with his children to avoid more uses of electronic device children should go with parents outdoor sports physical exercise uh, visiting the new places and uh, even uh, the children who are uh, living with the parents they can assist their parents to some uh, uh, domestic works at the home uh, parents should monitor his children uh, regular basis and another uh, person mr i think uh, rajiv he mentioned the very crucial point like and we should not uh, compare with my children to the another children but in that case we can make a competition uh, to grow up 
so this is all the discussions actually this is very important to us and 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 uh, to maintain this uh, these things uh, so finally i would like to thank all of the participants who are uh, uh, attending today in this session this that it was the first session to, for us and um, and i believe that this is very important for uh, for us this session and we can continue actually the, today's session was you know uh, as for our circulation it was uh, like experimental uh, session so i believe that everybody will helpful our generations especially younger experience those uh, uh, who are living here or abroad and anywhere uh, so inshallah we'll continue keep in touch with us and thank you very much everybody assalamu alaikum hello 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 হ্যালো <laughs> young students now they got maturity very early as we didn't get earlier it is true mm -hmm. what is by explain mm -hmm. and now children having enough experience enough knowledge about the technology uh, earlier than us okay children might be having some uh, particular demand for the mobile set electronic devices yes so parents has to come to know yes it is necessary for his particular age or not it is necessary for his technical idea or his practical knowledge uh, suppose uh, his child is uh, studying in technical course so it is necessary this electronic device or not so parents has to come to know yes. then, then parent can decide if it is necessary he can allow them to use but not to use excessively always it cannot be it can be used as professionally not it can be used always just as a uh, playing games other things and it is avoiding the tendency of learning avoiding tendency of uh, that means education it will be avoid to the uh, other things so parents has to alert of the, their children parents has to know yes what is their capacity as is we explained same thing i am uh, telling also so parents has to know what is child capacity what child knows what is the requirement so if parent knows he can make program he can make monitor so he can uh, time to time he can monitor he can come to his child yes what child is doing uh, what it is necessary not always i'm giving one device and whatever time he has to play no 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 it is not like that so even parent has to be a real friend of child so if parent can be child or friend of child so he can come to know is what child requirement what is doing well is doing well or bad or thing if some sometimes child can do bad things so a parent can see it with him when parent uh, tell him cool in cool brain not in shouting tendency sometimes parent will doing some shouting uh, the child in front of other child that time what what happens the child is getting shame in front of other friends so parents should not repeat this a parent can shout his children not in presence of other friends so he is getting insulting so parents have to take care of everything parents should okay. be yeah three point each and every point thank you alway thank you for your suggestions uh, we believe that uh, inshallah next session uh, we'll get you also uh, yes, with sure. your uh, with your kids and uh, thank you all thank you all thank you thank you thank you and uh, last of all actually today i you know the first session we have some actually the mistakes for this one uh, uh, we just uh, uh, i would like to uh, just introduce our moderator today finally the abdullah tahsin he is the student of mechanical uh, engineering department and d uh, montfront university dubai and he is the uh, eldest son of engineer alamgir hussain who is living the sharja and thank you very much everybody thank you assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam yes um, thank you 
everybody. Uh, that was a wonderful session. So I would like to conclude the ending of this session. Uh, first of all, a lots, lots of, lots of thanks, and my sincere, uh, my sincere. Uh, sorry, excuse me. There might be some technical issues. Yeah. So my sincere uh, respect uh, to the elders for making this session possible. So until next time, we'll see you again. And inshallah, by the will of God, progressively and more progressively, this session will become more relevant and everybody will be able to share their thoughts, their opinions, uh, on, on uh, real world topics and hopefully uh, we will make this platform even bigger. So again, thanks to the elders and also my dear friends. Uh, with that being said, uh, here we have come to the end of this session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.